finally, the last part arrived for my brand new gaming PC. Elijah, Elijah, Elijah. Wasting money again when you could have just used your old case, or better yet, this one that someone was just throwing away. Those things are older than I am. There's no way it's gonna fit all my modern hardware. Really? Challenge accepted. See? Too easy. And with the money I saved, I upgraded your CPU, your SSD, and even your memory. Wow, but there must be a downside, right? Otherwise, why would companies continue to make cases? Okay, there are some downsides. Your old case is not gonna have the latest USB standards. It's not gonna have a fancy glass panel or nice cable management. It'll also probably make your rig look kind of worthless, but I see that as an absolute win. This kind of thriftiness can save you hundreds of dollars over time. So I'll tell you what, Elijah, you come up with some fancy feature your new case has, and I'm gonna make it happen on this one at a fraction of the price. Deal, but only if I can tell them about our sponsor. G-Skill, their Trident Z5 CK DDR5 CU DIMM memory is designed for core Ultra 200 series CPUs and features a built-in clock driver for support for up to 9,600 mega transfers per second. Learn more at the link in the video description. Step one of saving money on a case is to get creative and get your hands on the cheapest possible canvas for your modding masterpiece. Local electronics recyclers can be a great bet, but if that fails, there's always Facebook Marketplace and sorting from low to high. We're gonna start there. After the usual runaround from jerks who label things free that aren't free, we were lucky enough to find not just one, but a handful of cases that would work. But do note that not all cases are made equal. For starters, you'll wanna make note of the size so you can make sure that whatever parts you plan to use are going to fit. Also materials. If you're gonna to have to modify your case, well, you'll want a material that your tools can work with. Speaking of modifying, my power supply is gonna be suffocating up top. Most cases have vents now for it. And so does this one. It just doesn't know it yet. Look at that! Who says Sherrod from the business team's the only one with a grill? This looks much nicer. <laughs> no, I haven't gold plated it yet. Okay. Now, obviously, most people are not gonna have the tools at home to do something like this, but many hardware shops do allow rentals, and some cities even have maker spaces and tool libraries that you can use to help get the job done. Now I just need to cut these plastic strips off here and clean things up a little. <laughs> By the way, I fully acknowledge that we could have just had the intake fan on the bottom, but Elijah asked for a grill, and now he has one. I'm almost afraid to ask what you're gonna do for my CPU and GPU, but here it goes. The case is sealed off at the front, Linus. How are you gonna cool that? <laughs> Elijah does have a point. There's nowhere to mount case fans here. We'll talk more about that later. But for now, one trick that is very popular on r slash tech support MacGyver is just ripping the side panel off and then pointing a regular old household fan at the system. It's gonna be just as effective. Now, we're just about ready to start our build, but before we do, let's do a quick history lesson on why I expect all of my brand new parts to work in a case that's 20 years old. Adam, the computer guy. I'm so glad you asked. The ATX standard for motherboards was patented in 1995, and the mounting holes and I.O. locations of the three most common sizes, ATX, Micro-ATX, and Mini-ITX, have remained unchanged since 1995. But don't let the secret get out. There have been other changes, like the motherboard power connectors and internal slots and headers, but none of them affect the shape of the board. So any board, as long as it follows the standards, should fit in any old case. And it does. As you can see, the IO shield goes here, or doesn't for boards that have them built in. And nine quick screws later, we are G2G. Actually, uh, does it require a backplate for the CPU cooler? Yes, it does. Ah, another feature we're gonna need to add. Older cases didn't have a cutout to install a CPU backplate once you already had the motherboard in. But don't worry, it got you covered.
All right. Ready? Yep. Yeah! Come on, that was pretty cool. Yeah, okay. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, it looks pretty good. And if we wanted to avoid all that extra work, all we would have had to do was install this on the motherboard before we put it in the case, like the old days. So we installed it, took it out, cut the hole, just to put it back to put this on? Yeah. Now you have this feature. And look, it almost won't slice your hand open. At this point in the video, I can't tell if I'm on team new case or team buy an old case. <laughs> we're having fun though. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the case is the made. friends we made along the way. <laughs> Probably the wildest thing that hasn't changed is the pinouts for these front panel connectors. This HD audio connector, boom! Still HD, let's go. Same goes for my USB 2, as well as my front power switch, reset switch, and LEDs. But what about USB-C? I wanna charge my phone. <sighs> Poor innocent Elijah. You weren't there for the good old days of PC building when cases used to come with these bad boys. Five and a quarter inch bays, which for some inexplicable reason, manufacturers still make accessories for. As tempted as I was by the fan controller, the hard drive caddy, and the literal drawer, I felt that this I.O. bay would better address Elijah's concerns. Type-C USB 3.2, two USB 3A ports, two USB 2 ports, and even front panel audio. Now, it's a fair criticism that buying one of these can cost as much as a case. Some of them are pretty fancy, boasting features like premium audio DACs. But in the spirit of buying into form factors that you can carry forward with you, I would recommend an external DAC anyway, rather than a fancy one of these, so you could move it around and use it on your laptop as well. All right, so I'm at 20 US dollars. What else do you need? Well, I bought RGB RAM and that Secura GPU. I would like to be able to see them and this side panel, you know, don't just leave it off because I have cats. <sighs> okay, if you must have a side panel window. Home Depot sells sheets of acrylic in pretty much any size you need. All we gotta do is cut it up. More cutting. Oh, great. And there it is. There's multiple options for cutting acrylic. You can score it and break it, you can use a laser, or probably the best option if you wanna keep things simple is to just buy the right size in the first place. So we've got our side panel window, but I'm gonna do you one better. Okay. With nothing but a hole saw, a pair of old pantyhose, and a can-do attitude, we can throw some filtered side intakes on this mama jama, oh. feeding fresh air directly to our hungriest components. Cool. Let's do it. You got the pantyhose, right? No. But I have something else. That is not going to work. Yes, it will. That is actually terrible. I'm kind of thinking intake fan here, intake fan here for our GPU, and I don't know. Oh, I thought that's... This How about another one here? This cutout was going to be for the... Glass. Yeah, I know. We're going to put an intake fan on the acrylic. On the acrylic? Yeah. Oh. That's not what I had in mind, but okay. Can do attitude, get it together. Please don't break the acrylic. This is our one sheet. Well, that's a pretty sheety situation. Get cutting. I'm a little worried about doing this on the acrylic, by the way. Are we gonna like shatter it to bits? Do we wanna just not take the risk so that way I can see all my pretty components without shattering it? Okay. Don't tell Elijah, but I'm pretty concerned about this ripping up the acrylic too. Let's see how this goes. What was that? Uh, nothing. See, it's working perfectly just like I told you. Cool. I have an idea. Oh my, oh my God. I just need more weight. Sir. I just need more weight. Oh yeah. It's so cooked. I mean, it's cooked. That's plastic, like right there. You cracked it all along there. Nah. All right, I guess we're only gonna find out when we peel the paper off. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a screaming person. <laughs> That's a vibe. <laughs> That's this video. Let's see if Linus actually did crack it or not. Wow. I for sure thought this thing was destroyed underneath. That 
is why you fail. It's a movie reference, you wouldn't get it. Oh, okay, what movie? The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> oh, okay. From the boomer Star Wars. You can cut that, you, you can cut, you can cut. Cut, please, please cut, please, please cut, please. This window is gonna stay on. It's like 9,000 pounds of VHB holding strength. That's good, I wanted a side panel window, so. You will have one forever. I want the best one. Damn it, Elijah, those lines are really not straight. That's okay. No, it's really not. Well, we can't, can't go back now. No, we really can't. <laughs> Okay, you know what? From the outside, it's probably... It's actually not that bad. Oh yeah, that's fine. I mean, compared to everything else about this side panel, it really doesn't stand out. <laughs> Look at that. Side intakes, front IO, uh, motherboard tray cutout. The only question now is, is our power supply going to fit? Professor Adam? Adam, the computer guy. Believe it or not, the width and the height of standard PC power supplies have stayed the same since 1995. And dimensionally, only the length has changed over the years as systems have gotten more power hungry. Again, there have been other changes, some of them controversial, but even the mounting hole locations remain unchanged. Now there is one thing. The original spec had the PSU as close to the CPU as possible. Why? The belief was the fan could pull double duty, pulling air over the passive CPU heatsink and also cooling the PSU before exhausting it completely from the system. But that obviously won't work because processors nowadays use like 250 watts. It's freaking stupid. Why would you need that much power? There. That resolves the last major hurdle. But here's the thing, not everyone's gonna be building a mid-range system. So why don't we take our case and take it to the next level to see if it can handle a high-end machine. To do this again, I'd probably make sure that there's no little metal filing bits left in here that could fall into the power supply. That could be catastrophic, but, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it again, I'm doing it now. And inside here is about $3,600 worth of modern, power-hungry hardware, including a 16-core CPU and a 4090 GPU. As you can see, everything fits. Let's game. Before we fire up a game, I think we should test our cooling. It's not the quietest thing in the world. And we appear to have a bit of a problem here. Oh. Our temperatures immediately spiked to 81 degrees and we are using 63% of our power. Also, I couldn't help noticing that one of our fans is actually getting spun backwards. Do you think there's too much back pressure in there? I do. Okay. See, here's the thing though, Elijah. I thought the front panel was staying open. I mean, we can open it. I designed it for maximum intake. <laughs> There's too much pressure in the computer. Okay, She cannot take it. Open the front panel then. Here we go. Let's see what happens when we do that. They are staying the Wait. same. It's not even hot in here. Oh. Elijah, that 12 pin power connector is not plugged in all the way. No, it was. I had an issue where it wasn't plugged in, so I plugged it in more. Look at it. Oh my God. Turn it off. Nope. You said turn it off! Oh, the clip is broken. Oh. Okay, that, man, that's weird, because yeah, I opened it up and I was like expecting it to be an inferno down here in the bottom of the case, because um, that would explain 61% power usage. You know what, none of this even adds up, because why was the GPU at 80 degrees then if it was only using 60% power and it Unless wasn't the a sense thermal pins issue? Weren't plugged in? Has this GPU been disassembled and reassembled? I don't know, I grabbed it from the shelf. I didn't, I just didn't check. I just grabbed it from inventory. Uh, the good news is that on lttstore.com, we can find PTM 7950 thermal pads that we can use to repaste this GPU and get great temperatures. Guess who just volunteered? Dude, I, nope, I'm just gonna go find a different 4090 from inventory. Nope. I'm gl really glad my one day shoot turned into a three day shoot. My side quest is complete, and as you can see, the 4090 is in my hand, because I actually had to put a different one in the computer. This is the one that Alex like tore apart for some water cooling and that shunk mod where it can draw a thousand watts. This cooler cannot cool it, so goodbye this 4090 and welcome in the iGame 4090. We're gonna try rerunning Furmark and see if we run into the same issues we did before. I'm pretty confident we won't, so let's just hit the 4K one. Let's see what happens here. 
Oh yeah, already our temperature's much, much better than the 80 degrees yesterday. And our power seems to be recording correctly. We're drawing like 440 watts on the GPU right now. I may be acting surprised that Linus's jank work did do well, but I'm not as dumb as the character I play on TV. I do know that buying a new case every single time we are upgrading your computer is a mistake, especially if you're on a tight budget. But I also know that it's not the worst idea either. If you're already planning on shoving an entire small nation's power consumption worth of parts into your computer, you might not be in a position where you need to pinch pennies on a case. And even if you aren't worried about pinching pennies, it might not be a bad idea to pick up something that's not this. Because if you get a nice case now, you can still carry it forward for future builds, which again, will save you the money. Before you do jump the gun on buying a premium case, let's go back to our original $1,000 budget and we'll show you what we were able to upgrade. You can choose to double the RAM, double the storage, and go from a six core to an eight core CPU that is faster. And I could honestly give you an infinite number of systems to use with the extra 10% of your budget. We gave up our time, but it was worth it in the end because we were able to get a much more powerful system. And while Linus isn't here to share in our glory of it working, we did have fun along the way. I got to learn how to use some power tools and you know, maybe touching our tools is actually more fun than, you know, touching grass. Did he script that? He really script that, okay. And it's almost as much fun as our sponsor. Ground News, their mission is to give you the tools to understand where your news is coming from so you can get as close to the actual facts as possible and then come to your own conclusions. After all, everybody has a bias, like the bias towards thinking you don't have a bias and are way more objective and rational than those other people who are so biased. So Ground News analyzes breaking stories from thousands of sources from across the globe and across the political spectrum, breaking down which stories are being reported by whom. For example, check out this story about AI startup Perplexity recently being sued for infringement. It got very little coverage from right-leaning outlets. Left-leaning sources emphasize the legal aspects about the story, while the center is focusing more on the overall struggle around content usage. Ground News helps you be informed of stories like this that might be missing from your regular news diet with their blind spot feed, which shows news stories that are mostly covered by only one side of the political spectrum. When you find something you're interested in, you can add relevant interests to your For You feed to see more similar news. So start reading the news, not without bias, but informed of it, so you can understand what the heck is going on in the world and be potentially the smartest person in it. Go to ground.news slash LTT or click the link in the description to get 40% off their unlimited access Vantage plan today. If you guys enjoyed this video, let's look back at a thousand dollar build that the forum suggested. We asked Reddit, our forum, and PC Part Picker, and they were all quite different. 